I've been studying on my car company for my next move. Seeing that I'm still using a post-World War II 2.2 liter engine, I thought about creating a new family of engines so it's more suitable for city cars and family sedans. Hey guys, it's Tries here, and let's continue managing my car company as we're right now in the year of 1953 on this January. And currently, we're still selling the Model SY, the large family sedan for this time period. And we're not making a huge profit over a million dollars per month. So as you can see in our finances for our revenue, as soon as the Model SY was released, we were making like $26 billion, dropped down to 23, and stayed consistent to around $22, $23 million a year. And expenses pretty much stayed consistent at around $22 million per month. So seeing that we got over $600 million in the bank, let's make another car and a new engine. Since the Model CB did pretty much good success in terms of our finances, let's go back to a city car and, of course, manually create it. And for the body we're going to be using, let's use a modded car body with this wannabe Fiat 600. I'm making a friggin' Fiat 600 clone. So for our wannabe Fiat, so for the panel materials, since we don't have aluminum at the moment, pretty much soon I'm going to upgrade both my car factory, well, maybe my engine factory to have aluminum, but my car factory, maybe a little bit later. So regular old steel. And let's see if this is viable. A monocoque chassis, seeing that we're not familiar with this whatsoever. But in terms of engineering time, this will work out great, including our familiarity too. But let's see how a monocoque would work. So also be out of steel because we don't have the galvanization plant for our factories whatsoever. And front launch two digital engine. It's not going to be the rear engine like the real Fiat's were. And for the front suspension, let's choose a McPherson uh, front suspension. And the rear, maybe a semi trailing arm would do. And for the engine, we're going to be creating a brand new engine on here. Instead of the Type Q, our World War II engine, which Japan uses engines back during World War II. So family name, let's choose it right here. It'll be Type H. I guess it'll work. And it's still going to be the four-cylinder layout, also caster. And oh my god, we got a lot of problems here. So let's just downboard this engine significantly. So maybe 66 up front for the bore. Hold on. So let's create a minor overstroker, so 76 exact millimeters for the bore, and a stroke at 70.5 millimeters to get the engine size to 994 cubic centimeters, or just under 1 liter. And sooner or later, we're going to be upgrading to like single or dual overhead cams, but 20% on duals? Really? Even a direct acting overhead cam in terms of engineering time is better than a push rod. We could try using a DAOHC, but let's find out sooner or later. And a bottom end, as per usual, cast, 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 ass, 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 stop, make that emma for hammer time, says Big Sean. And in order compression, there's going to be a big cheese, but would sell probably like 8.0 because compression currently in this game with the engine designer is a little bit uh, on like the unrealistic side. Like a lot of engines at this time period were like down to like maybe like a 7 or something like that, almost like Rocket 88 levels. But a lot of engines like four cylinders seem to like do good at like 9 point whatever ratio, 8 point something, especially being carbureted. So we'll start around 8.0, RPM limit, let's do 5,000 RPM, seems a little too high. And let's try out just a regular single barrel, single carb setup. I might change this up to a single barrel equal if we need to in terms of like combatant fuel efficiency purposes. Standard low intake, regular leaded fuel. And lastly for the headers of this engine, so do cast low headers, exhaust diameter, keep it for now, and reverse flow, none. 36 point, uh, 30, uh, yeah, 32.6 horsepower right now. And everything seems okay at the moment. But we do have a lot of breathing room, like too much breathing room in terms of the exhaust, not anymore. So a one inch exhaust will have to do, which will decrease the weight and increase the power just uh, quite a bit. And of course, the engine has some unutilized fuel octane. What'd I tell you? I mean, what's the fuel mapping that we got right now? So go to fuel efficiency and seems I, I mean, for a carburetor engine, seems decent ish. You're not a big expert on like fuel mapping and all that stuff. So going back to the heads here, so if I go to a push rod, it does increase the engineering time and reduces material costs and production units, including weight too, okay. But going to here, yes, it does reduce it by at least one unit for production units. It increases the engineering time, so it takes longer to produce and engineer the engine. And the materials cost, of course, makes it cheaper and improves engine efficiency percentage, okay. But we got some valve fault in the mix, unfortunately. So let's see how this engine works out here. So currently we got the horsepower rating of 32.5 horsepower, 3700 RPM. 
And a torque rating, which I forgot to change to units back to pound speed, at 67.1 newton meters of torque at 2900 RPM. Yeah, I end up changing this to newton meters briefly. Seeing that I forgot to change this back to pounds feet, seeing that I'm still trying to work on my most powerful engine at 16,450 horsepower, where someone did beat me by 17,000 horsepower in my Discord server, which the link to join us in the description below. So let's give you a listen of this still push rod engine being at one liter right now. Just like the Type-Q engine, revs around 4,500 RPM, but makes way less horsepower and is way less smaller than our predecessor. But it does improve our fuel efficiency too. For the drive-type front-wheel drive, a little bit too early, so for the drive-type rear-wheel drive with an auto- uh, manual, we can do automatics now. Okay, maybe for the future, so currently right now, a manual four-speed with the top speed set, keep it as is, to 70.3 miles per hour, as you can see, the estimated top speed claims 73.32 miles, which just increases to add some overdrive to improve fuel efficiency, but this will increase the tire cost multiplier, which will improve the final cost of the vehicle. For the tires, 85 millimeters? Okay, let's just use some hard long-life tires, still cross-ply, and my god, these are pretty small, 100 millimeters front and back? Let me increase these to do 500s, 105s front and back. I guess so. But we got this nasty offset for the front and rear, so it's improved the offset on the front to 25. No, 30, and 30 for the back. And for the brakes, we got some two shoes that have been um, implemented now, so let's keep the single shoe for now, 200 millimeters up front, uh, 160s in the back, drop this considerably, same thing for the front because this car is going to be quite lightweight. For the under tray, as per usual, no under tray whatsoever, brake airflow, keep it at the usual 10. And for the interior, I don't know how this is going to work out, this want to be Fiat body. Maybe keep this as a two seats up front, three in the back, a bench seat, but I'm not too sure about this. And choose a standard interior, standard AM radio for the first time, seeing it's no longer a premium no more. So let's do that, maybe make a base model to do basic everything. And for the driver and safety aids, See that the game always busts a nut here, so let's just use recirculating ball for now and... Okay, we're done, but no 1950 safety standards, 1940 standard safety standards, and for the suspension, everything standard, pretty stiff up in here, so let's change to a normal preset, and we are not so stiff. And we're making 31 miles per gallon, not that bad. City Eco Car, we're not on that line just yet, but what is this marker? A com com competitor gain 7.4%, so we have the edge, or what? And even looking at the regular city car, we are just batching the stat importance with our little desirability bar, like right on that mark, maybe a little bit more, I think. Our comfort side, our strong suit, we are just below that, unfortunately. We could probably improve like the suspension or something else to jump this up, maybe maybe our seats. What if we just compromise our seats, making this a 2x2? Two two? It's no longer a fun car, but we did improve a little bit on comfort, less than drivability, and still the same in our MPG. I mean, the transmission is definitely going to be an issue. Yeah, negative uh, 18 because of the gearbox, negative 20% because of the passenger volume of being a five-seater, and bottom out. Mm, let's see here. Mmm, yeah, we got some bottoming out issues, ladies and gentlemen. And the suspension, too. So, low capacity, too. Rear brake force is high. Let's improve uh, considerably. Okay, drop this bad boy. Fair. Not only that, we definitely increase our drivability and a little bit on our sportiness factor. Nice. And see, we got almost a 2% bottoming out factor. Where are we? Damn, is this actually this slow in real life? What if I drop this? Yeah, it kind of looks a little too low compared to a real life Fiat 600 that I'm looking at. Because I believe the back fender just beat, beats like with the top edge of the tire or something like that. What if I just increase this to a 235? Seems a little more legit. We're at a 2.1 now. Hmm. Alright, I did the best of my abilities with two in this bad boy without making this thing look kind of all weird and janky with the ride height. And also, I did swap this out to a four-seater and everything, so anyways, for the design portion of the vehicle, I'll design this car as is, in a time-lapse of design this wannabe Fiat 600 that doesn't look like a Fiat, but looks like a Weno. So let's get on to the design portion of this video, right now. So for the design of this car, I designed the front end by adding some circular headlights similar to the Model CB, along with adding a pair of small turn indicators below the headlights, 
including a new chrome front bumper with a license plate and bumper guards in between the plates. For the grill, I added a custom grill cutout by using some negative tape to cut into the body. Then, I used a grill patch fixture to insert the grill. Next, I filled in the gaps where the body was cut out to clean up the area inside the grill. Finally, I added this chrome grill bar design to add some style to the front end. For the sides, it's kind of basic. I add a single chrome circular side mirror on the driver's side door, along with adding a pair of turn signals on the front fenders, including a thin chrome strip below the door similar to what the Fiat 600 had in real life. For the back, I add a basic pair of taillights, which are both brake lights and turn indicators. I then decided to add this chrome bar that houses the rear license plate's lights, which illuminates to see the license plate at night. I also included the car's model name and trim level for the first time for the manufacturer. Now for the interior. This was a pain in the ass to do, especially find the right seats and dashboard. It took me over a half hour trying to find some decent looking seats and a dashboard that fit this car. So first, I added these cream colored front seats for the driver and passenger which took me a while to choose these. Along with a dual bench seat for the back passengers. Then, I added the 4 speed floor shifter located in between the front seats. After that, I worked with the floorboard and door cards seeing that it was easier working with those. Next, I chose a dashboard and pretty much made it fit by resizing it for this narrow and small car. It sucks that there's a lack of interior fixtures, especially for the dashboards that fit for these particular cars. I'm only relying on an interior mod fixture pack that's pretty much based in the 1950s and early 1960s. After fiddling with the dashboard, I added some minor amenities for the interior and made the seats a bit darker, including changing the floor to this dark gray cloth color. Then, I repainted the car to this aqua blue color and made some last second adjustments to the car. So, after getting everything done with this build, here's how it came out. This is the 1953 Weno CM. This successor to the Model CB is basically a rebadged Fiat 600. Despite this, it houses a brand new engine that's smaller and more fuel efficient than its predecessor. Alrighty, so finally I got the Model CM SE edition of this Weno car all set and done here with a semi-janky interior because like how I mentioned, it's due to a lack of old 1950s and 60s interior fixtures that we got here with the steering wheel just bumping up to the driver's seat. And before we sign off on this car, despite our only three problems we got here, such as the car's low capacity is being too low, the car is bottoming out, and the clearance in front of the engine is getting quite narrow, let's sign off and create another trim level of this car. So we got the SE model, and I'm guessing the lower budget model, I think this is going to be the City Eco Car version, will be just Model S, the trim level. So it's the CM and the S level for the standard issue level one, and SE for the slightly step up model. So if we go to City Car and City Eco, I mean, it, it was pretty great, wasn't it? Yeah, it does great with the desirability factor of almost 258%. Matches pretty well in the demographic level of 62%. 60 in the regular city car, 213.3 of the desirability percentage. But not the best in affordability on either of these two. What if I go in and like start making things a little bit on the more of the budget side? Either I should just make things budget or make a... I think I'm gonna make a smaller engine first. So let's clone the variant of the Type H model and this will be... I'm thinking like 750 cc will be the you know it's 700 700 will be the eco level and we're gonna be dropping the board to 60 let's do 60.5 and increase the stroke to a fairly considerable level are we gonna go let's just make this even 60.5 millimeters 60.5 millimeters for both the bore and the stroke you get almost to 700 cc's Never mind, I made it 700 cc, 60.5, 60.9 stroke. This is gonna be final. And in terms of power, we're now making 24.1 horsepower at 4100 RPM and a torque of 45.6 Newton meters at 3200 RPM. Really, increase the stroke improves engine efficiency and dropping this to what I had decreases it. What if I take a look at this? 
It's doing well, almost 38 miles per gallon. We gotta drop the top speed almost considerably to around 70, uh, 63, uh, 73 miles an hour. All right, now improve it to 24 horsepower and about 47 newton meters of torque. And with the fuel efficiency rating, I did improve it a little bit to a 36.3 miles per gallon. And what's kind of interesting about this car is it's yelling at me is that the engine is underpowered for the car's weight. I mean, it's 1,300, a little over 1,300 pounds. Go zero to 60 in almost a full minute. I mean, this was pretty much the deal with Fiat back in the day. It was a city car for inner city purposes, not for highway use. So I'm not going to change anything for the interior. I might as well just change up the paint job to this like off-white and silvery looking color. And for the trim level, let's find the right fixture to change the SE to an S. Where is it at? Right here. So SE to just S. Now let's sign off on this car despite our four problems. Sign off on this car and it should also sign off on this engine too, the 1 liter and 700cc version. And let's see here, it appears we're gonna get this in 48 months for the car. Try to manualize it a little bit, maybe like a 45, 46 months. And make our guys work a little bit more, put it at 54. So a mediocre setup, about 45 months it should be done for the actual car. Wait, wait, Type H. So, the engine. Oh, the engine takes 45 months, if I'm right. Uh, yes, this is for the engine, so it has not been signed off. Yes, it has, and so go to here, which I believe this should select the... Uh, oh, no, this is for the engine here. The last one was for the car. Oh. So manualize it a smidge, 48. Make our boys work a little bit uh, harder. And keep everything as is. So 36 and a half months, I believe. Put this to the Frunia Dueling Plant, which we got our Type Q model and our Type H, which this should be our successor. Factory hasn't been configured. I mean, it is our factory no matter what. Watch. Look, it's our factory. You likey? And for the heck of it, we might as well invest in a Q&A testing facility, which will add $40 million to our budget. And tell our boys to work on the 1 liter and 700cc level. Average total cost, eight, almost 900000 dollars of these two engines. Prove it to 81% for the quality assurance threshold, which now improves it to $900,000. And it should take three years, as stated. So, 36 and a half was three years and one month, which we should see this engine come alive. Now, for the fruity assembly plant, our engine factories are overworked. God dang it. Just kill off the Type Q model. Invest in a quality assurance testing facility and maybe soon put a galvanization plant. So you can put like galvanized steel type of chassis and stuff like that to reduce corrosion. So S, E, and S. Good. This reduces the threshold of overwork in the factories of having just one car having this particular engine. As we'd see, it's being overworked big time up in here. And two of these, not so much. And it claims $7 million of profit? Oh boy. And even getting rid of one model, so this is just the SE making 7.1 million, I believe. And using the S model, just under 7 million, 6.946 mil. And the forecasting tool, we're expected to make big buck up in here. So for the SE model, they're about almost batched, so the SE model will be 545. And calculate this, let's see here. Okay, okay. It looks like it's doing great in the short run, but it seems like it starts to level out in the long run once we produce and sell this car throughout its lifespan. It does good like in the short run and the mid-long, or mid-run, and then the long run, it starts to level out. With the target break-even point set to 5 years by default. Let's do 549 for the SE. I think that'll be good. And it claims by the year of 1956, October 1956, we will have this car done, the CM level of this city car. So hope the game is correct about having this type of big buck going up in here. And since we got ourselves a couple QA facilities for the engine and car factories, we'll pretty much take out a loan at 50%. 50% loan coverage, 36 months, sign her off. Got the Type H and CM levels of our cars. And here we are at the main screen, and since we got the Model SY still being sold, the CM and the Type H engines will be engineered, so let's just unpause our time and just advance until we get the CM and Type H engines fully engineered. 
Okay, we're good. The pre-orders are starting to kick in for the CM. Where is it at? Okay, pre-orders are starting to kick in right now for the SE and S models. Let's slow this down a bit. What happened here? Oh, the SY is done! Oh, oh crap. We gotta hurry the hell up. Please, don't make big losses, man. So, are we good? CM Mark 1 has completed the engineering. Type H Mark 1 has completed engineering. Please, a little over a million dollars. Pretty much like the SY. So it stopped in the month of June right now. We made about $3 million. Let's check out our finances. We're doing pretty good. And high sales, 2,600 sales of the SE model. So as the SY model becomes out of stock in the middle of 1956, we do gain a little bit of profit here for a revenue until our full bloom production in the month of November of 56 where we make about $23 million in revenue, then jumps up to about 25 for the past couple months. But in our expenses, our big expenses to a point is our loan repayment for the car production, the, uh, I never say car production, park car production. But pretty much it makes some money back in a way for adding the car factory and the engine factory to Q&A. Jesus, what's well, Q&A? Quality Assurance Testing Facilities. <laughs> I should call the question and answer Q&A building. If you want your questions to be heard, go there. So about $2.6 billion of loan repayments will be for our expenses throughout this tenature. So might as well just stop here for the automation campaign version, and let's begin to drive this car, both the S and SC models of the CM, into BMG Drive to see what it's like driving this car if this were to exist in real life. So here we are in BMG at the map of Italy, and the time trial I got loaded up is Port Gymkhana, and we were doing two laps with the SE trim level of the CM, same thing with the S trim level of that car, and basically give like a comparison and difference between like lap times with this particular car and the S level car. So let's get ready to start things off here and ready, go. Micro amount of wheel spin for the SE model, and we're kind of ripping ass already in second gear, and we turn left. Goodbye. Horror movie screamed out laugh. So make this slipping hand left-hander. Not too bad in terms of agility. Brakes are pretty decent. 200 millimeters up. Ooh, 200 millimeters up front. 160s in the back, both single shoe. I did not use a two shoe for the SE or S level trim levels for the brakes up front whatsoever. So the car is somewhat quirky, like in between corners and like exit, like corner exit speed. So sweeve here, watch that curb. Not too bad. I mean, it's pretty agile in a way because of a short wheelbase and pretty small engine. What do we do here? We got a U-turn. U-turns.com, says Jeff Fabiano. Ooh, a little bit of a uh, body roll there. Some of our tires were not even on the ground. So the game was right about the body roll as it stated, but in terms of the... Ooh, a little hot there, but in terms of the bottoming out, what do I do here? Right? Into left, good. So first lap time, 1 minute, 40 seconds, 537 milliseconds. Let's see if we can do a better second lapper since we're already in motion. I was about to say, since it has a fairly... Decent amount of body roll. I mean, there's some, but it's not extreme. But in terms of the bottoming out factor, I haven't bottomed out just yet. Oh no. Mom, we have a little situation. Our steering wheel is gone. So come to the U-turns.com hairpin turn. Hit the brakes hard as we can. A little bit of lockup. Yeah, the back kind of kicks up a little bit when you steer hard because of that body roll. If I'll just stiffen up the rear sway bars a little bit. It... Damn. I forgot I gotta turn left here. This would have performed pretty much better in terms of stability. I gotta really be more stable if I were to do so. And also, I did get a better time for a first lap of a 136. How about here? This will be better. 1 minute 34 seconds, 288 milliseconds for our second lap of a total time of 3 minutes 10 seconds, 518 milliseconds for the SE trim level of the CM. So we got a micro drift, go to free roam. And piss poor drift, so crash to this bad boy. 40 mile an hour crash, held up pretty well. Some of the exterior and interior fixtures are all over the place, including the drive shaft that has kind of disconnected. Now to the same time trial with the S level car. 
Alright, same track, same laps, and everything else in general, but with the S level of the CM Punk model, CM level of this bueno budget ass city car. So get ready to start this off and ready, go. Let's see if the 700cc engine will be capable of taking down the one liter older brother, or this and that brother. Let's see the stability. A tad more because we're not accelerating that hard, and it being having a lighter engine. Pretty much the SE is more focused on like straight line speed and general performance, while the S level is a little bit more kind of on both, but leans more towards the fuel economy. All right, hit the brakes. Less of a lockup. Okay, so it's same amount of brakes, same brake pressure, same brake size, but less lockiness with the front brakes. The brakes didn't lock up that much for the fronts. I swear, are we gonna get a better lap time compared to the one liter version? One minute 36 seconds, 517. I swear, it could be by driving or this car is a little more stable to handle. Cause there's some sectors compared to the SE model where I'm taking the sectors a little bit too like uh, quickly, a little bit more quickly off the line, stuff like that, getting better apexes of like Fix it by corners and stuff like that, by steering angle and all that stuff, so I can get the optimal speed coming out of there. Except for that little spot there. I swear, this looks pretty promising, so final straightaway. Uh, 1 minute 36 seconds, 646. A little bit worse compared to our first lap. Okay, we didn't beat it, so our total time is 3 minutes 13 seconds, 162 milliseconds. A little bit of a bad sector halfway through the track, and a mediocre entrance after the hairpin corner to make that left sweeping bend near the start and finish line. So we're gonna hit the wall of the... Barely miss it, so same type of crash with this car. At this object. There goes the steering wheel. Back it on up, everything still works with the engine. Headlights still work, the turn signals up front and on the sides, all that still work. Good the lights in the back, brake lights. Oh, that's my headlights. Brake lights and the turn signals because there's no reverse lights because it wasn't really that mandated back in the day. And the drive shaft is still screwed up. <laughs> so with the Wendell Model C and both the S and SE trim levels of this car, so as a quote-unquote successor to the CB with that 2.2 liter four-cylinder engine straight from World War II and the Jeep era and all that stuff, this is pretty much a big step up in terms of fuel economy of having both the 1 liter and 700cc engines in those two cars. So the 1 liter model, the SE, is a bit more performance focused while being fuel efficient in a way. And the S level with the 700cc engine has less power but more fuel efficiency and isn't really that used well on highways. So in terms of general design of this car, while it does kind of have like some pedigree to the CB with some of the general styling cues and everything, styling is not that bad all around with the front of the car, the rear of the car, as it tries not to be a Fiat 600. This is basically, this car in particular, is just like a loose rebadge of a Fiat 600. Instead of being rear engine, it is front engine with these two cars. So anyways, that'll do it with automation with the light campaign version 4.2 and driving these cars in BMG Drive. And for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss out on any videos like this in the future. So this is Tries Rising Up, and signing out.